everyone in this session we are going to discuss about the experiment of pre vibration of cantilever beam using virtual lab you can see here this is the link for the virtual lab it is a virtual lab of nitk this is a list of experiments here we will take up each experiment one by one today we will start with the first experiment of machine dynamics and mechanical vibrations lab the first experiment is of free vibration of cantilever beam if you click on this it takes you to the page of this entire experiment to the left you can see here there are various headers the first one is aim what you are trying to experiment using the virtual lab the purpose of the experiment is to determine the logarithmic decrement damping ratio damping frequency and natural frequency of a cantilever beam under free vibration so you are calculating logarithmic decrement delta the damping ratio zeta damping frequency omega d and natural frequency omega n of a cantilever beam which is subjected to free vibration free vibration means an excitation is given to the system and it is left to vibrate and come to halt in case of forced vibration a continuous excitation in the form of force or displacement is given to the system so here we are discussing about free vibration you are already aware of a cantilever beam one end of cantilever beam is fixed and the other end is free or some kind of load is applied to it so let's see what experiment we have here this is the theory part of it which you can refer there are certain learning objectives set for every virtual lab so here after completing the simulation experiment on free vibration of a cantilever beam one should be able to model a given real system to an equivalent simplified model of a cantilever beam with suitable assumptions or idealizations calculate the logarithmic decrement the damping ratio damping frequency and natural frequency of the system find the stiffness and critical damping of the system calculate damping coefficient of the system so these are the learning objectives so that is what we expect from this kind of a simulation experiment let's talk about some example of a cantilever beam you can see here this aircraft has a wing attached this wing is nothing but a cantilever beam one end is attached to the aeroplane and the other end over here is free you can see there is some load on the beam because of the motion and also these are the two propellers attached here so you would find some amount of load being applied on the beam whose vibration analysis we are trying to do here so this is nothing but a simplified cantilever beam this is a real life example which we have understood as a cantilever beam now let's talk about the natural frequency of a cantilever beam when given an excitation and left to vibrate on its own the frequency at which a cantilever beam will oscillate is its natural frequency this is something which is self understood this condition is called as free vibration the value of natural frequency depends only on system parameters of mass and stiffness mass we are going to indicate as m and stiffness as k when a real system is approximated to a simple cantilever beam some assumptions are made for modeling and analysis important assumptions for undamped system are given below suppose if there is no damping in the system then these are the assumptions the first one being the mass m of the whole system is considered to be lumped at the free end of the beam you can see here this wing is simplified as a cantilever beam and the entire mass will be considered as a lumped mass which means the mass is together and it is assumed to be acting at free end of the beam no energy consuming element damping is present in the system that is undamped vibration undamped means there is no damping the complex cross section and type of material of the real system has been simplified to equate to a cantilever beam for this example here you can see there is a tapering section so when we are going to analyze we are going to take a simple rectangular beam or we can say the cross section is an i section or a t section or a c section circular rectangular any kind of a simplified cross section we are going to assume and solve so this complex system is simplified 
to a particular standard system that we are very used to studying. The governing equation for such a spring mass system without damping under free vibration is given as mx double dot plus kx is 0. m stands for mass of the beam, x double dot is the acceleration, k is the stiffness of the material of the beam and x is the displacement. Since there is no damping, cx dot term is missing here. Now when I divide this equation throughout by m, it becomes x double dot plus k by m. k by m is nothing but natural frequency, omega n square. x is equal to 0. k, the stiffness of the system is a property which depends on the length l, moment of inertia i and Young's modulus e of the material of the beam. And for cantilever beam, it is given as e is 3 ei upon l cube. Now when I talk about damping in a cantilever beam, Although there is no visible damper, dash pot, the real system has some amount of damping present in it. Every system definitely has some damping in it. For example, even if you are walking on the road, after some time you feel that there is some energy loss. The reason being the friction on the road, which is resisting your motion. It could also be some very small amount of friction because of the ambience, the air around you. It also brings you to a halt. It may not be a halt position, it could be something like you lose energy because of the friction. In this case, the cantilever beam, after vibrating for a certain duration, it will come to a halt because of the resistance it is facing. When a system with damping undergoes free vibration, the damping property must also be considered for modeling and analysis. Single degree of freedom mass single spring damper system under free vibration is governed by the following differential equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is 0. This was undamped, so cx dot was not present. Your cx dot is present. Again, if I divide throughout by mass, the first term only reduces to x double dot. Second term is c upon m. It can also be written as 2 zeta omega n and k upon m is omega n square. C is the damping present in the system. Zeta is the damping factor of the system, which is nothing but the ratio of C and CC. Critical damping can be seen as the damping just sufficient to avoid the oscillations. So it will bring the system to a halt. At critical condition, the value of zeta is going to be 1. If you say it is undamped, zeta is 0. If you say it is underdamped, zeta is less than 1. And for overdamped system, zeta is more than 1. For real systems, the value of zeta is less than 1, which is going to be our underdamped system. For system where zeta is less than 1, the differential equation solution is a pair of complex conjugates. The displacement solution is given by this equation, where x0, you can see here x0, and here you can see v0, are the initial displacement and velocity, and omega d is the damped natural frequency of the system. The damp natural frequency is calculated as below. Omega d is omega n root of 1 minus zeta square. Omega n is the natural frequency of the system. Natural frequency is generally a frequency by which a body is going to vibrate. We have already discussed about this in the modal analysis of the cantilever beam. You can just check that video for the same explanation. I will tag the video in the description and in the I icon above so you can just check the analysis so you will understand what is modal frequency that is natural frequency of the body a particular beam or a body can have more than one natural frequency next let's talk about the procedure the aim is to find the damping of the given beam so when you begin the experiment you need to click on start experiment and that's how your experiment is going to start Here the procedure is given wherein you can find the logarithmic decrement delta by using this formula. 1 upon n is natural log of x1 by xn. You can refer this figure which will be generated after we click on start experiment. And from here we can find out what is x1, what is x2. n is going to be 1 in that case because we are considering only one oscillation. So this is one way of solving. The next thing that we are going to find is the damping ratio zeta. You can use this formula for calculating zeta of the system. 
and the last is finding the beam stiffness k in newton per meter from young's modulus so you can use this formula and you can find the stiffness you can also find the natural frequency omega n by using the value of omega d which is here and zeta which will be given to you and you can calculate the value of omega n using this formula next you can calculate the equivalent mass from omega n and k by using this formula k upon omega n square you can also find the critical damping cc in newton second per meter from mass equivalent and k by using this formula and last you can find the damping c from cc and zeta by using this formula again you are going to get this graph and solve from here so we are going to also get some result that is of c so this is the process of solving in this tab of self evaluation there are various questions given suppose if i solve for the first one a body is said to undergo free vibration when it vibrates freely with no force acting on it so let me click this answer and i'll just check for one and i'll show you if the answer is correct you will directly find this is not changing to any red color and at the end you can see that one out of 15 has been answered accordingly you can solve all of them and check the answers this is an mcq type of uh, tab given to you i am not going into this in detail i am directly going for the simulation part we will first click on the experiment 1 you can see here this is the experiment given the material is given as steel the cross section chosen randomly is an i section the length is 1500 mm when you click on the start button this is going to vibrate for some time and then when you click here you can get the results it is asking to calculate the logarithmic decrement delta from the displacement versus time graph so this is the first value x1 that is already given as 100 you can just push the slider ahead on the second wave and you can see here the displacement is 11.78 so you can just use the formula delta is natural log of 100 upon 11.78 it is natural log of x1 by x2 n is 1 so xn becomes x2 so when you use that you will be able to calculate the value of delta on solving i get the value as 2.1387 i can't check if the answer is correct you will get a green if it is not you will get a red cross So this is how you solve for the first one. We'll go for the experiment two here. Again, I'll click on the start button. This will vibrate and then come to a halt on its own. I'll just click on start experiment to get this result. Here I have to calculate the damping ratio zeta from logarithmic decrement delta, which means I need to first find delta, which is again natural log of x1 by x2. So x1 is 100. X2 is Sixty-nine point two. I get the value of delta as zero point three six eight. Now I need to calculate zeta. So we have already seen a formula for that. When I substitute in the formula, I get the value as zero point zero five eight four. And click on check. You will get a green tick here. I'll now go to the experiment three. Let's click on this start button, and then we will click on the start experiment. This is the graph obtained. I have to calculate the natural frequency omega n in radians per second from omega d and zeta. The value of zeta is given here, and this is omega d. So I'm going to use the formula. It's omega d upon fifty-three point five four seven. You can see here it's given. Divide by root of 1 minus zeta square i obtain the answer as 5.0221 this is correct so that's how you are going to analyze the experiment here apart from this if you see in the procedure 
you can also calculate the value of this is 2 k by using 3 ei upon lq so e value is the value of young's modulus for steel i is the cross section based on which cross section you have chosen for example if i have a t cross section then i have to calculate i for a t cross section the value of length was always given so you can just substitute from the data and get the answer this was calculated here mass equivalent is k upon omega n square so once you get the value of k and also of omega n just substitute get the answer of m equivalent cc is 2 root of km we have already got k and m substitute get the answer and for c you have got just now cc and zeta also we have found for the experiment so you can just substitute and get the answer so that's how you're going to analyze using virtual lab for free vibration of a cantilever beam i hope you have understood how to analyze using virtual lab if you have any doubt please write to me in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon for latest video updates see you in the next session thank you